So to undo um, everything, you have to use the ungroup and clear outline. Uh, but please note that you cannot go back. Uh, this is very important because this doesn't apply to the uh, saving and editing of the file. Uh, if you go and clear the outline, this is it, you cannot do, uh, undo it. So uh, basically when you're absolutely sure you want to ungroup everything, this is the, t the moment to click this button. Um, the next button in the outline tab, uh, you have the subtotal. The subtotal actually works as a math uh, or any mathematical operations you may want to do on a entire workbook. So you this way, just to let's say sum up the data you have over here, I created this before, you have to do the sum for the entire row and click it and write the sum each and every time. So over here you have to write it a few times. But imagine if you had like 50 columns and they wouldn't be like one, two, three, but you would have to do, uh, you would have some separators between them. So just dragging and dropping them would be an error because you would have to do some uh, changes in the functions because of the separation columns. So how to do it in a fast manner and, and well without any work. Basically we mark the entire uh, workbook so columns would be best because you don't have to go from top to, uh, to bottom. You use, we use the subtotal button and over here you have a few things you, you might want to know this. So first off you have the at each change in. So where do we uh, where do we uh, write the changes? Uh, the use function, which fu math function you might want to use. So we will use the sum function. Uh, add subtotal to. So uh, which functions will be covered by the uh, the summing up? So where would would we write down the uh, below total of every function? Uh, okay, if there are subtotals in the last call, uh, last uh, row, uh, do we want to replace them? So if the subtotals will be uh, written in some, let's say, in some categories, because you can, uh, instead of um, instead of using the uh, sum, ca sum category, which is empty right now, you could use like quarter two or quarter one, where it will sum up the data in uh, after some empty spaces. So let's use the sum button and summary below data. So this gives out the summary of all the data below. Okay, let's click OK. You might not see many changes, but just to unzoom. And you can see that it created one huge, uh, one huge uh, data division. So it would go back to the end. And what else it does is actually, by going down, the grand total. The grand total tells you the sum of the entire column. So over here you can see that the grand total of the, you can see the grand total of this column. So let's go up and see how it is functioning from this point to this point. And you have the function number of the subtotal. And same goes over here. Um, the number is so high because it actually sums up our subtotal. Um, next off, uh, I told you a bit about the sorting, but you also have the filtering options. Um, so how to use the filtering options. Um, first off, uh, sometimes you might want to uh, filter some data. So basically we mark, uh, mark this area, click the filter button and you can see it um, just pretty quickly uh, marking those little signs in every one of those. So you can see, for example, by the customer and that some of the customers just show up once in a while. Uh, one customer can be uh, categorized in many of uh, positions. So one customer could have bought for example, some chai, some Alice Martin, and something from the bottom of the, of the list. So how do we check uh, what did this uh, customer actually buy? By using the filter option. So after what we did before, which is mark the area, click the filter button, you have those marks. So click it, 
and you right now see uh, the categories you have in the in this column column F so by unmarking because right now we have uh, all of them selected by unmarking them you can see we have different uh, customers but they uh, show up only once so by clicking one customer let's say alf key and click OK you can see what this customer actually bought you can see one two three four five six positions you can see in which quarter and you know everything about this customer this is really helpful when you have to uh, quickly find something from a specific customer and you can see this customer only bought one thing okay um, well the uh, filtering options actually allow us to sort to also sort for from a to z and from z to a but you can sort it we choose this one and now let's sort it and now you see the list over here being sorted by the by the alphabetical order you can always undo this we can also um, let's undo the entire operation you can also sort by color which is very useful when you have uh, marked the areas by let's say some of the customers would be red because they didn't pay, really pay us before some are orange because they sometimes pay sometimes have problems uh, financial problems and some are green because they are fine so let's mark just some customers um, with these colors so let's say orange these customers will be sorry green in this time because this customer this time just just uh, paid it was fine and these call customers buy red because we still didn't, still didn't receive any money from them so what we can do now is filter them by colors and that's how easy filtering really is um, as you can see you have many other uh, options you can use the text filters which contain the uh, markers or well you can just uh, type in begins with and you want to say let's say L I N and you can use or function to use other uh, functions so basically I began with LIN and because I didn't really remember the entire name of the customer so uh, it found it and shows me the LINOD customer um, you have other options which says end, end with so this would um, initially mean that the name ends with these letters so this would be um, the same as when I explained to you that you can use the star marker to write something and the question mark uh, the question mark to mark the uh, letter you don't really know so basically these functions are used in here uh, what else uh, equals does not equal so maybe some math math filters or or name filters or whatever because over here you can see the filter uh, just telling the list so it has to be let's say you want two names Alfiki and you want to use uh, another one so we'll use Antari and you can combine uh, the two of them so you can see here the question mark and the star so to respond any single character and to represent any series of characters okay and here you would see those two but basically uh, it unmarked uh, it is un unmarked because uh, uh, we used uh, a error here because we didn't use the or but we used the end okay uh, next off in the text filters you also have the contains and does not contain so maybe there are a bunch of words like five or six different words and you, do, you just remember one of them so we can use uh, the uh, the Alfiki filter because well over here it's not really a good example because we have only one word but if I type this in it would much match and look for anything that has the uh, another uh, in it and everything behind it so let's write in enter and you know you can now see that it marks everything but let's mm, select all and maybe in the Anton I'll type in one and let's uh, search by text filters uh, 
contains you see the contain button and we want the Anton containment. So we can see that it found not only the Anton but also the Anton 1, which would be impossible in any other uh, circumstances. So uh, that's basically it. If it's about filtering, you can also uh, search by, so let's say G. So it finds anything that contains a letter G in it. There's a lot of them, so 